to our next impressive research project here with my friend Gabriel. Gabriel, kick it off for us. Tell us a little bit about all of your hard work and this wonderful research that you've conducted here. Yeah, so my project was with Dr. Brian Walker and we looked at the presence of microplastics in fang penguin poop. So microplastics, it's a buzzword recently just found in blood. But we started this project well over two years ago and with the intention of, all right, we see that there's plastic in wild penguins. We see that there's plastic everywhere. Can we find them in captive penguins? So with that, we, uh, for the past two years, started from scratch. Very little literature is, uh, can be found on this topic. So we've had to pull together whatever we could and we've made a successful protocol in order to take feces and get it to a point where it's just the plastic remaining. So out of, all the or out of all the samples that we collected, we work with three different areas. We work with the Mystic Aquarium, the Central Park Zoo, and my mentor, Professor Walker, actually went to Argentina into the wild and collected uh, penguins' uh, feces. Of those, today we're just looking at the Mystic Aquarium, but my work is going to be continued after I graduate by other research students. And at the Mystic Aquarium, or let me talk about the methods. We start with poop put it into hydrogen peroxide, and that gets rid of anything that's organic. So anything that's non-synthetic gets rid of it. You filter it, and what's remaining is these little polymer pieces. And you're able to take the pieces, run it through an analysis, and you could know what the plastic is. So from this, we had 143 different samples from Mystic, 118 fibers. So, but not all the fibers are plastic. About We've only been able to look at 47 type or 47 different ones so far, and 21% of them are uh, plastic, which is kind of what you're looking for in the literature. Uh, there's nothing done in captive penguins, but in the wild, you tend to find that you'll find a lot of different fibers, but only between 12 to 35% are actually plastic. So our research, very preliminary right now. But the main purpose of this research was to create projects that could, ha that could occur for many years to come. Because of what we were able to do with um, the funding that we got, we got it from the Corrigan uh, family, we also got it from the Undergraduate uh, Research Fund. Because of the, that funding, we're able to create these protocols that's going to continue to look at penguin poop, but also can be used in any microplastics project. I mean, Dr. Walker jokes about us going to the Tully, grabbing a hot dog, and running it through the protocol to see what kind of plastic is in it. And our main goal is to take uh, captive penguins, so whatever we get from Mystic and Central Park, and compare it to the wild penguins that Dr. Walker uh, took samples from. And then um, that's our end goal, but from there, plastic, you know, it's in our blood, it's everywhere. So can really take off. Yeah. Really impressive, impressive work. So you did mention at the beginning of um, your pitch that microplastic is only recently a trendy topic. So tell me what inspired you to even dive into this research to begin with. So uh, Dr. Walker has worked with penguins for 25 years. So he's quite the penguin guy on campus. And plastic, one of his colleagues had like started to look at it. So when I was brought on to do research with him, um, he asked me about it and I thought that pl plastic is kind of everywhere, you know, it's in everything. So why not uh, take a look at it? And a lot of the literature that's been published that we've looked at has really only started to come up in the past decade. So it's very new as opposed to a lot of the other research that what Dr. Walker used to do, which was on penguin stress. So in he 25 years of work with that versus less than a decade of total work on microplastics in this field. So it's a new and emerging field and I wanna be a medical doctor one day and we don't know what plastics do to us just yet. So, I mean, right now we're just seeing, oh, they're there. As a doctor in the future, I wanna know what it does. So I guess that's what kind of inspired me to really be gung-ho about this uh, project. Yeah. Totally makes sense and it's very interesting. Um, you referenced Dr. Walker so much. I'm curious <laughs> about that mentorship or that mentor to mentee relationship that you have with him through this process. Yeah, no, I, I kind of call him like my best friend, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, he's just been there for me every step of the way. And he's not just like a research mentor. He is someone who cares about me as a person. When I started doing research with him, uh, or when I was doing it over the summer, I was also studying from MCAT, and he was so understanding, gave me all the time and space I needed when I needed to focus on studying. Like, he cares about me as a whole person. Anytime I'm having a bad day, sit down, tell me about it. You know, and it's because of 
that bond that he was able to form with me and because like he went to Argentina and he tried to convince the provost to let me go, didn't. But to see him like fight for me and to see him care about my development that much is why I talk about him so much. Because I think a lot of credit goes to him. A lot of the reason why I'm here talking to you is because he's he cared about me as a person. And you know, from a lot of the bio department, you know, I'm a biologist, maybe a little biased. I see a lot of that in the bio department. Just the professors take such an interest in the students, not just in if they're smart or not, like they just care. So which is special. Why, yeah. That's wonderful. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful research with us, talking about your relationship with Dr. Walker, um, and good luck, and good luck in your next steps after the symposium. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you.